Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, and good morning, colleagues. I hope you and a good morning. Uh, uh, sorry, good night, and you are ready for the for the day. So we're going to shift the gears a little bit and look at the rotavirus vaccines. My name is Jason Mwenda. I work for WHO based in Brazzaville, Congo, at the region office, where I support PPD sentinel surveillance and new vaccines impact uh, monitoring. But this morning, we're going to focus on the, the rollout of the rotavirus vaccines in our region and trying to look at how these vaccines are being used in the continent and the impact that these vaccines are having in our continent. So this is uh, very briefly the outline of what we want to cover. First of all, we'll look at the, uh, the disease burden for pneumonia and uh, diarrhea. Um, I will not spend so much time on this because I think we all know that these two diseases are the uh, diseases that cause very high mortality in under five children. We'll look at the um, some of the vaccines that are available, the rotavirus vaccines that are available and pre-qualified by uh, WHO, uh, and look at the policy recommendations on how these vaccines are being implemented for those countries that have introduced and those that want to introduce. We'll look at the progress of the introduction, uh, specifically in our region, and look at the coverage and what we need to do to ensure that these vaccines are having the desired impact to reduce uh, rotavirus uh, diarrhea in our region. I will show briefly some of the data that we have in terms of the evidence of the impact and the effectiveness of these vaccines in our region. Um, and, and then finally, we'll just summarize and maybe just highlight a few points in terms of the action points. What are some of the action points that we need to take going forward so that we can will have the full benefits of these vaccines. So in terms of the uh, burden, I think it's already been mentioned and even from the country presentations yesterday, we had about the high burden of pneumonia and diarrhea, particularly in, uh, in Africa. And some of the countries trying to show some of the data from their, uh, from their countries but I just want to say on the onset that the data that we have uh, is not from all the countries. But I think when you look at the data globally, what you find is that pneumonia and diarrhea cause very high mortality and high burden in our region. Um, every year, we know there is close to 1.2 million children who die uh, as a result of pneumonia and diarrhea. So the burden is very, very high. You can see that, the and this is, I think, the data for 2009, which is about 14 years ago. So the data may have changed, but this is some of the data that is available. And I will tell you later on why I'm showing some of this data. So um, every hour, about 140 children die as a result of pneumonia and diarrhea. So you can see the burden is fairly high. And close to about 3,350 children die each day for pneumonia. So we have a major problem, major public health problem in Africa particularly. And you later on see that most of these deaths are occurring in Africa. And over 70% of these children are in 15 countries. And when you look at those 15 countries where most of the death are occurring, uh, I think close to 13 of these countries are actually in Africa. And some of those countries are represented in this workshop uh, this morning. So it's really a very sad story. And we need to do something about this because the interventions are there. And not only vaccines, but there are other interventions that we can be able to implement to reduce this high burden of pneumonia and diarrhea. 
We do have vaccines, but as just said, and as you've heard from the last uh, presentation, uh, PCV has a major impact, but these are the, not the only interventions that we have. For pneumonia, for example, we have antibiotic treatment. For diarrhea, we have, um, you know, wash and, and other interventions that are available. So just to emphasize that vaccines are not the only interventions that we can use to reduce the mortality due to pneumonia and diarrhea. And as I said, I think the data that we have when you look at across Africa, the data is quite limited. And from the previous presentation, there were just a few studies, South Africa, Kenya, Gambia, but really in Burkina Faso and a few other countries, but the data is really lacking. So the core here is that we really need to make sure that each country has got very strong and robust surveillance so they can be able to monitor the impact of these vaccines after the introduction. We need to know the threats. We need to be able to see what is the impact of these vaccines. We need to really answer the question, are these vaccines bringing the desired return on investment? And to be able to do that, we need to have continuous and consistent surveillance in each country. So this is um, just to remind you about this very important document. Many of you may have seen it. Uh, this is the document that was developed in 2009, uh, WHO and UNICEF and other partners, recognizing the high burden of pneumonia and diarrhea, and says how some of the actions that the countries need to take to be able to reduce the high burden of pneumonia and diarrhea. Uh, this was called Integrated Action Plan for Prevention and Control of Pneumonia and Diarrhea and Ending the uh, High Burden of These Two Diseases by 2023, sorry, 2025. And as you see later on, we haven't really made much progress. We do have the strategies and the documents and actions of what we need to do but we are not making much progress, and the data is actually available. Uh, so I would encourage you all to have a look, the, look at this document, which is GAP, GAP D, uh, developed in 2009, highlighting the high burden and also the actions that need to be taken by each country. Yesterday, I think we need, was it Somalia that mentioned about the uh, SDGs and the targets for SDGs? If you look at all these strategies, they are all talking about how can we reduce the burden or the high mortality in under five children. And this document specifically speaks to the idea of pneumonia and diarrhea and what needs to be done. There are indicators on this document that are being monitored. And this is not just about vaccines, but all the interventions that can be implemented to reduce diarrhea and, and, and pneumonia. So it's a very important document, and I encourage you to have a look at it. Uh, last year, 2022, IVAC, and I think we have colleagues here from IVAC who can speak more about uh, this report. I find it quite interesting. So what IVAC did and John Hopkins University is to look at the GAPD, the, uh, the indicators, and I don't have time to go through all the indicators, so I just want to summarize and to show you where we are by last year, when you look at some of those indicators, some of them are very specific indicators, others are composite indicators. But these are the 15 countries with the highest burden of diarrhea and pneumonia. And you can see out of the 15 countries, 13 of these countries are in Africa, and some of them are represented here. A chart is here, you can see the um, in terms of other five mortality due to pneumonia and, and, um, and diarrhea, you can see the figures here for Chand is about 29,000 annually. And then you can see Somalia. And then on the right, in the final column, you can see the deaths per thousand, uh, live births. You can see quite, quite high. You can see other countries in Africa, uh, in Niger, and Tanzania and, and other countries. So really to emphasize that 
even though we have a document that was developed 14 years ago, we haven't really made much progress. Of the 15 countries with the highest burden of pneumonia and diarrhea, 13 of those countries in Africa. So we really have a huge, huge task. And this workshop suddenly that discusses what you can do about these two diseases, I think is quite uh, timely. And I think we really need to accelerate some of the actions that are in the GABD to be able to meet the SDGs. So let's um, shift a little bit to the rotavirus vaccines, which is really the main focus for uh, this talk this morning. And to say that for the rotavirus, in addition to other interventions, we do have very uh, effective vaccines. Fortunately, we have four available vaccines for implementation. And for every vaccine that is being developed that has undergone clinical trials, the data is made available to what you call SAGE. This is Strategic Advisor, Advisor Group of Experts constituted by WHO to look at the available data in terms of the efficacy of the vaccine in terms of the safety of the vaccine and the programmatic implementation, how the vaccine can be implemented. And for rotavirus vaccines, they have all undergone through this process of evaluation in terms of the safety, efficacy, and programmatic impl uh, implementation. Currently, there are four WHO position papers starting way back in 2009 there was an update in 2013, and more recently, 2021, which is, uh, oh, doesn't work. Uh, you can see on the right here. Oops, sorry. Oops. This is the, w, the latest WHO position paper, 2021. I encourage the countries the four countries that are here that are planning to introduce rotavirus vaccine to look at this WHO position paper. It gives all the information about the available vaccines, how to uh, implement the vaccine, and any additional information that you may know about, that you may want to know about these vaccines. So currently there are four vaccines which have been pre-qualified by WHO. Not all of them, of course, are available, as you will see later on. Uh, for implementation because of various reasons, and we'll mention this. So we do have um, the early generation vaccines like the Rotatec, uh, uh, Rotasil, uh, sorry, uh, Rotarix, and more recently, two additional vaccines, which is Rotavac and also Rotasil. And for Rotatec, Rotavac, and Rotasil, these are three dose uh, vaccines, whereas the Rotarix is implemented in uh, uh, in two doses, and these vaccines are being used in Africa, uh, particularly the Rotarix, Rotavac, and, and the Rotasil. We don't have any country currently in Africa that is using Rotatec. We had a few countries at the beginning, to, but they had to switch. So the only vaccines that are being used in our region are now Rotarix, Rotavac, and the Rotasil. In addition to the implementation of these vaccines, WHO also recommends the establishment of surveillance, as I mentioned, sentinel, hospital based sentinel surveillance that will help in terms of providing data that can support the decision making to introduce the vaccine. And also, post introduction of these vaccines, you can also monitor the trends of disease and the impact effectiveness of these vaccines using the, uh, the existing sentinel. So, surveillance is extremely important for countries. In terms of the schedule, uh, the WHO position paper, when you look at it, it sets out when uh, these vaccines should uh, be started in terms of administration, six weeks, starting six weeks. And to, for, the, for the vaccines that are, are three doses, it's six, 10, and 14 weeks in terms of the schedule of those uh, vaccines with four weeks interval between the different, uh, the different uh, doses. And also, uh, the vaccine could be administered simultaneously, of course, with other childhood vaccines 
we heard that the countries are here, therefore, they are planning to simultaneously introduce PCV and rotor. We have a few countries in Africa that have actually done simultaneous introduction of uh, PCV and rotor uh, at the same time, uh, together with the other childhood uh, vaccines. Uh, this is a, a slide, there's a lot of information on this, but I'll, I'll try to summarize. So you can see the, uh, the four vaccines that are available. As I mentioned, there is Rotarix, which is made by GSK, uh, Rotatech, then the Rotav more recently, Rotavac, and Rotacil. So these are the four um, rotavirus vaccines that have already been pre-qualified by WHO. And what you see here is also the data on the efficacy of these vaccines generated and during the, the different clinical trials. So these vaccines, all of them have undergone extensive clinical trials. And you can see the, uh, the, the data. In terms of the efficacy, the efficacy varies uh, based on the mortality strata or the settings. So you can see in uh, low mortality, these are the uh, highly developed countries. The efficacy is actually quite, quite high in the region of the 90s. But then in the, in the medium mortality, you can see the efficacy goes down to about 70, 80 uh, for the Rotatech and, and the Rotarix. For the Rotavac and uh, Rotacil, there were very limited clinical trials in Africa. It's only Rotacil where uh, there was a limited clinical trial that was conducted in Niger. But a lot of, and as you know, these are Indian manufactured vaccines, so there were a lot of clinical trials that were done in India. So most of the uh, efficacy data and the safety data is from the clinical trials that were conducted in, uh, uh, in India. And you can see where some of the, uh, some of the sites where these clinical trials were conducted. But, but I think, as I mentioned, you can see the decrease in terms of the efficacy based on the uh, mortality strata. So in terms of the efficacy of this vaccine in Africa, the mortality is much lower. But in Africa, this is high mortality setting. What you've seen is that the impact is actually quite high. Even though the efficacy was low and doing the clinical trials, but the impact is quite, quite, uh, quite high in, in Africa. So these vaccines are suddenly quite, uh, quite, quite useful. And you can see in terms of the pre-qualification, when these uh, vaccines were pre-qualified, Rotarix was uh, 2009, and also the uh, uh, Rotatech, and more recently, 2008 and two, uh, 2008, two additional vaccines, Rotavac and Rotacil, uh, were pre-qualified by WHO. And you can see the number of doses is only one that is two doses, the others are uh, all three dose uh, vaccines. Um, you can see the composition in terms of the uh, genotypes that are contained in these vaccines. Uh, for the Rotarix, you can see it's U1P8, which is a monovalent uh, vaccine. For Rotatech, there are four um, serotypes, G1, G2, G3, G4, and this backbone of, P, of uh, P8. For the Rotavac, it's G9, uh, P, uh, P11, which is also a monovalent vaccine. So we have the uh, vaccines with many serotypes and vaccines with just a single uh, single serotype. Uh, the uh, Rotacil is also got uh, G1, G2, G3, and G4, and, and G9, and uh, P5. So this is the composition of these vaccines. But I think something important here to highlight is that even though the, the composition varies, what has been demonstrated during the clinical trials and subsequent impact evaluation is that there is cross protection between the different uh, different uh, vaccines. So really, the um, in terms of the decision making, uh, the decision making to introduce should not be guided by the composition of the vaccine because we know there is substantial cross protection across the different serotypes. Unfortunately for Rota, unlike PCV, Rota we have not seen any serotype replacement, which is good news. And they are not they are not serot they are not genotype specific, unlike the impact of PCV that is uh, a serotype specific. So that's the difference and the distinction that uh, perhaps important to note. This is the presentation of these vaccines. I won't really spend so much time. I think later on, I think tomorrow or later today, we'll be talking about the formulation and the presentation of these vaccines. But you can see in terms of the uh, presentation of these vaccines and the impact 
that uh, the presentation has in terms of the cone chain, uh, which is a major consideration uh, when you're introducing this vaccine. So you can see the different formulation in terms of Rotatec, which is no longer used in our, in our region. It's, um, it's available in terms of liquid, ready to use in a plastic tube. It's a single dose. What is for the Rotavac, just the five dose, liquid and ready to use, it comes in terms of one or five dose uh, and it has a dropper uh, for the application of the vaccine. Rotacil, and you can look at this later on, it's also, it comes as leophilized. So you need to reconstitute this vaccine. Uh, I think the liquid form uh, will be available or is, is actually available uh, shortly, but currently it's a, it's a leophilized uh, formulation. So you need to reconstitute. So you can see uh, all the, uh, the presentation of these vaccines and the impact it has uh, in terms of the cone chain. And these are important consideration that you need to look at. And there are um, uh, softwares that are available in terms of um, calculating the cone chain requirement, depending on which vaccine you want to, uh, you want to introduce. So let's shift uh, a little bit in terms of the, the status of introduction. You can see we're actually doing very well in terms of the implementation of these vaccines in Africa and, and, and globally. So globally, there are about 118 countries that have implemented this vaccine. For rotavirus vaccine, the uh, initial introduction in Africa was 2008 by uh, South Africa and the national rollout in 2009. Uh, we also continue to monitor the coverage in, uh, coverage in different countries. So this was really the, the first introduction in Africa, same as uh, PCV South Africa was the first one to introduce. Uh, Uganda and other countries have also implemented, and we'll show you shortly, and we'll continue to, um, uh, to, to mention the coverage in terms of uh, these, these vaccines. But just to say that in most of the countries, the, the introduction is a high-level event presided over in most cases either by the president or the, or, or the minister of health. So this is the progress. Uh, apologies, the map is not up to date, but so far uh, 42 countries out of 54 in Africa have introduced the rotavirus vaccine. And you can see in terms of the progressive introduction of these vaccines, 2014 was, was a good year where we had um, a lot of countries, 15 countries introducing the vaccine in a single year. So you can see 78% um, of the uh, countries in Africa have introduced the, uh, uh, the rotavirus vaccine. So we've done extremely well, and you can see when these countries introduced. The latest was Nigeria uh, last year, 2020, uh, 2022. In terms of the, uh, the coverage of the vaccine, and these are regional uh, average, uh, but the data is available for, for each country. You can see the coverage is still, um, is still low, and this is the latest uh, WHO UNICEF data. Uh, for rotavirus, the vaccine is 51%. For PCV, is 68% regionally. So uh, we still have a, a long way to go in terms of it, ensuring that these two, two vaccines, uh, the, the coverage goes up to match the, uh, the other traditional vaccines. These are the 12 countries that are here to introduce. Some of these are represented here, Chad, uh, Guinea, Sudan, and Somalia. And you can see some of the reasons why these countries have, have not introduced. And uh, we heard yesterday from uh, the four countries why uh, some of the challenges that they have faced in terms of uh, deploying these, these vaccines. So we still have um, a number of countries that we need to support to introduce in, in addition to the four that are here today. For the PCV, these are the um, the 10 countries actually in Africa that are now produced, you can see the seven in the WHO uh, Afro region and uh, when they are planning to introduce, which is good news. So I think the good news here is that all the countries are either uh, approved or planning to introduce the uh, rotavirus and PCV vaccine, which is a good news, which will be major interventions to reduce the burden. So just a little bit about the performance of these vaccines in terms of uh, impact. So as I mentioned, we have a very robust surveillance system that is uh, coordinated by WHO to monitor the impact of these vaccines. And we do document uh, the impact. These are some of the publications uh, from Africa showing really the public health 
benefit and the impact of the rotavirus vaccines. And these are data from the individual countries. You can see uh, this was a supplement where the data from seven countries was analyzed and put together to really uh, highlight what is the public health benefit and the impact of these vaccines. And to some, just to summarize, uh, this is um, the network of the countries. We do have close to 40 countries that are doing, uh, 38 countries that are doing surveillance uh, for rotavirus diarrhea and demonstrating the impact pre and post uh, introduction. So the, uh, this is uh, analysis that we did um, up with the data that we hand up to 2018, showing that for the countries that had introduced the rotavirus vaccine at the time, there was substantial close to 40% 40, uh, 40 reduction in terms of the diarrhea hospitalizations as a result of the, and this is rotavirus specific um, uh, impact. Whereas for the countries that are not introduced the vaccine, there was no change, much change in terms of the uh, diarrhea hospitalizations. Uh, this is some of the data also summarizing the effectiveness of the rotavirus vaccine in our region. You can see a number of countries and this data is, is available in publication. But if you look at the effectiveness, it's very close to what you saw in the earlier slide in terms of the efficacy of the, uh, efficacy of the vaccine and very substantial in terms of the uh, public health impact. And this is the data that is available, the countries where these studies are being done. Uh, this is a slide showing data from uh, uh, 14 countries in, in our region uh, that are uh, monitoring the effectiveness, the impact, and also looking at the, uh, the genotype, the trends of genotype over the years, pre and post introduction of the vaccine. We also have, we are looking also at the economic uh, impact of these vaccines and the cost effectiveness of uh, the use of these vaccines. So this data uh, is available, uh, uh, particularly for Rotatec, which we had a few countries that introduced and then the Rotarix. But for the newer vaccines, that is the uh, Rotav uh, Rotavac and Rotacin, we, do, uh, we are just now generating the data for the countries that have started uh, implementing the two uh, recently pre-qualified vaccines, Rotavac and Rotacin, and very soon we'll have the data from from, from Africa as well. But just to summarize uh, the vaccines from the surveillance data that we have, it's got a major public health impact and we encourage the countries that are not introduced to, uh, to introduce the vaccine. So this is my last line just to summarize. So we've seen commendable progress in terms of the introduction, 78 countries that have already introduced the vaccine, but we do have countries that have been not introduced, including the ones uh, represented in this workshop. And really, we should have consistent effort uh, to, uh, to support these countries. Um, in terms of the um, reduction, in terms of the rotavirus hospitalization, we have seen uh, 135,000 um, reduction in terms of rotavirus hospitalizations and 21,000 deaths. So these vaccines are actually having a major impact in terms of the reduction and 36% reduction in terms of rotavirus confirmed diarrhea hospitalizations in countries that have introduced the vaccine. So we really need to continue with the surveillance and sustain. Coverage is still low for most of the countries, as we said, 51%, and we really need to work uh, with the countries to improve the coverage. Uh, 17 million children so far have been vaccinated, uh, tw but 21 million remain unvaccinated. So we still have a major um, task ahead of us. So we really need to make sure that uh, uh, these vaccines are being deployed and monitoring the impact. So I'll stop here for now. Thank you very much for your attention.